I have to come up with something better. I also need a haircut. <laughs> Just noticing that on the screen. Uh, I have to come up with something better because this was kind of an impromptu little shelf thing, storage thing, drawer thing that I built quickly on box number four. And if you go back, way back in my videos, I, I explain each box separately and what's in each box. And four was the miscellaneous pieces that really didn't fit anywhere else. Like the one whole box is just the habitat. The habitat goes right in there with the landing pad on top, which I also have to fix up because the habitat, the, uh, the landing pad moves around, which kind of destroys the entire top of the habitat if I'm not careful when I'm transporting it. So there are, there are deficiencies with the boxes that are quickly remedied if I ever get around to actually putting st uh, like uh, foam around so things don't shift around. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, especially this guy. This guy's a little bit annoying. And again, so I'm not pulling the box up. You can go look at the old videos where I show you what's in box four. But basically box four contains the diamond, the keg topper, Jeff's rocket, and the, the, the uh, uh, space ops level. Um, and there's still room because, of course, a diamond doesn't take up... It, it takes up air space in there but it doesn't take up space in there because it's it's, it's kind of awkward so there's a lot of empty space around it and i hold it in there via velcro which is fantastic so the diamond's fine the diamond never moves never breaks <laughs> this breaks every single time as you can see it's broken now <laughs> and at the show this thing's the hardest thing to fix too because it's kind of intricate it's got wiring all the way through it and i was just like so I have to come up with something. Uh, so what's probably gonna happen is I'm gonna revamp this whole shelf thing and actually make stair, I mean, foam cutouts and just insert these things in the foam. Like, you know, you watch those movies where they open up the, the briefcase and everything's got a, got its own little zone in the foam. I just haven't done it yet. And, and I've had the boxes since before COVID. Uh, I did like two or three shows before COVID with the boxes and I did a bunch of shows now after COVID. And every single time, this guy's broken. <laughs> point to the right thing uh this guy was broken today too by the way so i had to rebuild this and put it back in here so there there is room for improvement all as well the box number four has more room to store other stuff but it's kind of awkward because the diamonds in there and the cake toppers in there and uh, this is the other stuff so um it's on the list it's on my ever expanding list of things to fix <laughs> so i'm gonna put this off to the side i'm not gonna bother fixing the cake topper, you know, you got the one in the background way over there that I showed you. Uh, I wanted to talk about, it's going to take a while to haul out, but in the interim, la, I love this guy. This was, this was a fun build because I did the 918 mock uh, using this, this big, ugly wing piece. Uh, whoop. <laughs> what did I call it? Um, and, and, and I, and I love my 918 re reissue with the, with that piece. And then I wanted to do the 6890, um, with the same piece. And it, it took a little bit longer to come up with something that I actually liked. And then it became kind of a hybrid between a 6980 and the Galaxy Explorer, because in the back, the guy comes out with this little thing. So, I mean, I like that. Um, you know, and and you got the double like the six nine uh, the six eight nine zero opening, uh, except again it's not trans dark blue, it's trans yellow because trans yellow is always better, and of course light gray in this case is light blue, um, but it's got that guy back there, and that's the way it worked because I wanted the 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 um overall aesthetic of the six eight nine zero. Um, I think I might have one up here, maybe. Or did I put them all in storage? I can't believe I would have put them all in storage. I do not see one at all. Oh, way in the back. <laughs> Let me see if I can get them out without breaking 17 things. Uh, 6890, uh, hiding the original. Oh my goodness, the Galaxy Explorer's away. So, my 6890, my original. <laughs> The other ones, of course, are the ones I made, and I made a whole bunch of them. I'm not going to remember exactly how many I made, but there's a video about that. But I loved this ship when I first got it. It was my first two-part ship. 
because again, the Christmas before I got the 918, this Christmas I got the 6880, the 6890, and the shuttle carrier, and my favorite little rocket sled up there. Um, but I loved this ship. I thought it was utterly fantastic. And this was because, again, the rocket sled, gray wings, and the carrier, uh, gray with white little shuttle, uh, this guy was radically different. There's no trans yellow in here. It's trans dark blue. So, ooh, that's new. <laughs> so, uh, so I wanted, I wanted to keep the overall. Let me get these both in the picture. I wanted to keep the overall appearance of the six eight nine zero with this guy. And the one thing I don't mind losing, that was kind of neat about the six eight nine zero, and I think the six nine eight zero. That's up here somewhere. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, it, it didn't do it either. Is this little this little piece right here, this little gap here between this wing plate and that wing plate. I didn't want that. <laughs> so I, I didn't have that in this guy. You can see uh, there's my landing gear falling off, which is not a shock because it's instead of a one piece landing gear, it's four pieces. But uh, it's just smooth there. I like that corner better. But I wanted that gap. I wanted that gap. I wanted the double guns at the front with the, the trans screen on it. Um, so keeping all the, uh, any antennas in the back, this is just a complete direct rip off from the 6890, uh, the setup here. Um, and I'm okay with it. I, I, I like this one. And this one actually, because this is the one that usually sits on top of the habitat at a show, people notice it and they say, Ooh, that's kind of cool because it's, it's an actual mock. It's not an actual original set. That's just my take on the original set. <laughs> Anyway, so we're going to put those aside because that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> but that was in the way for me to get what I want to talk about because somebody had mentioned it a while back. And now let me just undo the Velcro. One. Let me get the other one. Slide it on out. Oh my goodness. This guy. Boom. <laughs> now, I've, could, uh, let me see if I can adjust the camera. Sorry for shaking the camera. Get the whole thing in. I have said continuously that this by itself is really crappy. <laughs> it, 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 uh, for those who know and say, ooh, like the like trans yellow, that, that's expensive and there's eight of them here. <laughs> so, uh, and, and people say, ooh, this by itself. Like, th th I, will, I will be the first to say the sum of the parts is, uh, how do you want, the, the sum of the parts is greater when they're together than when they're apart. Uh, because the parts, when they're apart, the various sections... I mean, this is okay as a build if this is by itself. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's interesting, but it's obviously wanting. And then, as we talked about, as you, my friends, remember from a few episodes ago, <laughs> uh, I was showing you exactly how this thing works. Remember that? This will go on here. And this is why I wanted to hollow out the diamond, because I'm actually going to be working on that, not necessarily the connection, between here and here, because that's pretty much solid, but I'll t talk about how this one works. But the issue is that I want to prevent the landing pads from drooping. And so that's why I wanted to haul out the diamond. So over the next couple days, I'm gonna be working on, uh, as long as I don't keep on breaking this landing pad, I'm gonna be working on coming up with an idea to cantilever, I think that's the right word, cantilever. <laughs> not a flying buttress, but a cantilever, the landing pad onto the tower. Now I had that years ago and I thought since I'm hauling out the, the, the diamond, this is what I call a diamond, since I'm hauling out the diamond anyway, and since somebody wanted to talk about it, they were asking me actually for a CAD file of the tower. I did create one years ago. My problem was that was like five laptops ago. And, and I, I, I try to remember to back up everything before I go to my next laptop. I got a slew of external drives here that over the years have just acquired dust because they're full. I, I tried going through the months. I couldn't find the actual CAD file for the actual big layout, uh, our, our seven and a half by tw uh, 10. And even I, I did the, the seven and a half by 18 that we had at BrickFet 2016 or it was on CAD. Um, but I actually have the, I had quote unquote, 
the entire tower catted. Now I did cheat in that CAD dock, but it's, it's a stupid cheat and anybody who knows how to build can work it out. So it's not a cheat, but basically I built this entire top half. I copied it, flipped it over and put it at the bottom. So all these slopes, I did not bother rebuilding at the bottom with the inverted slopes. I just took this entire, because it is a mirror. <laughs> this is by, but right at this gray line here uh, and this gray line here, this top half is identical to the bottom half, except these are two by two slopes and these are two by two inverted slopes. <laughs> so I said, that's the difference. And you put the same bricks, except opposite, the complete mirror. So instead of rebuilding the entire bottom half with inverted slopes, I just took the cut. So it's in my CAD document, this top half is just flipped over and put on the bottom. For anybody who wants, if I find a CAD and give it to you, use inverted slopes and, you know, build the pieces upside down because right now, or right side up, because right now in the CAD, they're all upside down. Uh, but that's what I did because it's a cheat and I'm, and I'm lazy and nobody, like, I don't think I have it here, but you can go on my Flickr channel. You can see the tower as it is in CAD and because I, I even made some quick videos uh, using POV Ray. I made some fun videos of a ship coming into the layout. Um, and that layout basically is what I have now, except my layout, physical layout, smaller than what's in that POV ray. But um, ML CAD imported nicely into POV ray, and then I got to do the the movement and the shuttles flying around. I love that. I, I spent hours doing that. It was su such a good time. But again, when it's doing the POV ray, these pieces are upside down. They're regular slopes upside down. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Anyway. So a really quick synopsis of building this, because again, it, 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 it shouldn't look complicated because it really isn't complicated. This is my old school building technique, which is basically bricks on top of bricks, straight up. It is honestly all bricks on top of bricks. That's all there is here. There's nothing, there's no fancy, um, the, I think the fanciest part of this build right now, first of all, is the wiring that has to go through it because again, I got the wires at the top, right? That go to the next levels. So this is the wiring at the top and I have the wiring at the bottom that come from the previous levels, <laughs> right? Because I want this thing lit up. So that was fun to put in there. The other thing that's semi-interesting for me anyway, is the Technic beams, uh, which... I didn't want to cheat by putting non-Lego in there to reinforce it. And of course it has to be, I don't know if you can see right in the middle, it's empty all the way down to the bottom. It's, it's like, it, there's a void all the way down. Cause I didn't want to make it look like the engine room ish in Star Trek TNG, uh, where this is the, the engine, uh, and the, the entire, uh, the, there was a plan of getting the fiber optics, the Lego fiber optics. I played with those for a bit and just have a fiber optics, spool all the way down to this level here and have it spinning around because it's fun but i didn't do that <laughs> so right now it is empty all the way down there's wiring in the way now because i just <sighs> i had to get this done quick for for whatever and i haven't gone back to retrofit it so you can see that the spider web there of wires at the top and you can see the life lights uh brick there uh the eight uh port life lights brick which light up all this top part. And there's another life lights brick down here, which lights up all the bottom part. So there's uh, eight, 16, um, I think there's 24 life lights in this module, but not only 24 life lights in this module, there's one very, very long EL wire in this module, which goes through all the trans yellow two by two rounds that are behind here. And you can see that, let's see if I can do this nicely. Cause I did build this thing to be taken apart, which that shouldn't have happened, but it did. Um, <laughs> um, so if we zoom in here and I'll try to turn it aside. So this is the elevator, the, the lift that goes through the entire tower, top to bottom. And this is basically where all the structures carry down the weight, the physics, like in, outside the universe, the actual building. Uh, these uh, two by two by, or two by four, the, the round pieces here, um, carry the load from the top all the way down to the bottom. Uh, but behind that, you can see that I have all these little two by two yellow uh, bricks, round bricks right there and over there. 
and I, and I weaved an EL wire through all of them. So when the sinks plugged in, those those things light up. It's, I think it looks beautiful. <laughs> so so um, so there's that. Uh, this part, I thought that was one of the coolest things I found out is that if you come out for, uh, studded this way, uh, right across here, uh, come out four, and then you use your, uh, my favorite piece, the one my four hinge plate. <laughs> and then this thing fits perfectly. And what I did on one layout is I built another um, uh, moon base corridor connector here on the, uh, so it was, it was an octagon basically. And I used it for my little launch pads for the guys who are in the rocket packs. Uh, which I thought was cute, it was like the training school. So I built basically this layer here as a round, uh, and I had the uh, the, um, the the doorways, one there, one here, like eight of them around here. That was cool, I enjoyed that. Um, but this is a relatively old piece, and I can see that it needs a lot, a lot of TLC right now, <laughs> because the, the plates inside are coming apart. Um, and it's not, populated like there's a guy there um and there's a guy here right there because there, there's i just take these things off and put a guy in <laughs> so um i i did a video a long time ago showing you how you can have these guys upside down and connected because it's connected pretty easy uh i can dig up that video if somebody asked for it it's somewhere in my feed but what i wanted to talk about is basically i'm gonna like get close let me just Starting at the bottom, <laughs> don't want to drop it. <laughs> uh, plates for the floor, obviously, and this is again what I mentioned before. The whole the whole tower's gravity held together, like all the different parts are just lay laying on top of each other. Uh, but I do on the lip, the 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 part below. Um, has a little tiny tile at the edge that's higher than the tiles in the middle so it, it latches on here and then over there and on all four sides so it doesn't slide sideways but it just it is not studded in it doesn't connect it's just laying on top of tiles uh and then um I get right, right in real close uh bricks 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 and then the uh two uh one by three uh well sorry one by two by three inverted uh and then two two by twos inverted all the way up to the door that's it. And of course, I had to have that there. Uh, gray means a level, basically. This is fun. <laughs> things are falling off my shelf because my my diamond is so big, it's just hitting things over there. So I will try not to do that. Chewbacca went for a, a leap. Put him back up there. Thanks, Chewbacca. Um, and you can see right here... There's a gap. I don't know if you can see it. There's a gap right there. And so this is what happens because the landing pads are so heavy that it just pulls pulls that down. Now, the idea was, because it's like a flying buttress a little bit, that these, these, these inverters come all the way up here and then they're solid back underneath here. So it's not like it's joined at the middle in the middle of the tower. It's like out here is where the bottom is reinforced by this coming down. Uh, so it, it, the, the droop is not that bad, but it's something. And it's something I want to get rid of. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be taking this entire tower, the, the entire diamond apart to fix it because I've already added years ago, because I tried fixing it earlier, as you'll see, a one by one Technic brick right there. And there's one there on the side too. And basically what I was doing is I had a studless beams coming from that hole, from these, these two holes across here, coming up, I'll go this way so you can see it better, uh, coming from here and going up to the landing pad. So there are some older pictures on a couple of shows where you'll see that piece. It looked, uh, it, but I noticed it. No, mo nobody else really noticed it and cared, but I noticed it. And it was like too, it was too big and bulky for me. So what I plan on doing now is I, I acquired a whole bunch of used lots lately. I had one of these or maybe two of these from the old hockey games. 
um, street hockey, or I can't remember which one had, I got two of that, but I've got four more. So I just need to find two more. And what I'm going to do is they're, they're going to come out now and I'm going to do some sort of magic. Um, well, let's do it on this side so you can see, uh, I'm going to do some magic that, um, will go to the, the, the landing pad, <laughs> right? Uh, and then having, uh, maybe something come down from here to at, at a 90 degree on this guy so it holds it in place and i think this would be a lot less noticeable than um than a uh studless beam i think and uh maybe put like a like a five l on it or whatever so it comes out to here and then it kind of angles this way it goes right to the end of the landing pad i don't know yet that's what i'm gonna be working on i'm gonna be working on the geometry to connect these guys to the landing pad. So the landing pad has reinforced so it doesn't droop as much. So there'll be more flat. Cause I, I'm even noticing some of the pictures, even the video that my buddy Pete took, um, that my landing pads to me look like they're drooping and they are drooping. And I, I think it's about maybe a half an inch uh, at the edge of the landing pad compared to the center of the tower here. Uh, they droop and I want to get rid of that. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Uh, I thought about it and what happened was is that this is how everything comes together in my head <laughs> is that I had to clean out under my desk and finish sorting all of those bins out before I could do this because I had to bring my wooden boxes back down here and this is where they get stored under my desk. <laughs> so, and they wouldn't fit under my desk because I had all those bins to sort under my desk. So this has been in my mind since, well, even before the last couple shows to get this working again, uh, because every time I did a show, I noticed the landing pads were drooping. I, I, I'm not saying they were drooping more than they were before, but I noticed they're drooping. And I've been ruminating, you know, deep in thought, as you know, the, the, the professor looking at the blackboard, trying to, you know, fix an equation, just kind of ruminate. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Because I'm I'm Joe Smart Guy, uh, so uh, I wanted to do this for a long time, and I, I I had the studless on there for two or three shows. I didn't like them, so I took them off, and I accepted the droop that was remaining. And overall, I mean that was well before COVID. I think it was like one of the brick fats when I added them, and it was before the brick fats were done, I took them off. So the last couple of brick fats, they weren't there. Uh, so that's a long time ago, like a half a decade ago, minimum, <laughs> right? That I, they've been missing, and the, the the pads aren't drooping anymore. I don't believe, but they are drooping. And so if I put this on there, I'm hoping they'll be straight. That's the hope. Uh, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Hey, hey, what else am I doing with my time? <laughs> so, so basically, and I'll show you this. Uh, basically you get this guy not that guy i think i think i might make him blue you got this guy love this guy love these guys it's better than those uh old uh toothed um things that we got for those eight four four eights and stuff like that um put that there put that there Come on, get in there. And, uh, there. come on. Wow, that's odd. Get in there. <laughs> Let's do it on the other side, too. Uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Give me blue, give me blue. Da -da 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 -da. And and that is not necessarily why, and I should have shown you this, but I showed you the, uh, the flip side on the uh, landing pad side. That's why this stuff is six wide and not eight wide. I could have made them eight wide to make it stronger. The 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 the, the, the whole Technic rig here, again, two two bricks thick with plates in the middle, and a vertical which is hidden inside here, a vertical reinforcement to pinch them together. Because on the outside, this is what pinches them together, right? So this is what happens, right? So this thing will pinch them together on the outside, and then one goes here if I really want to. I just kind of ignore those ones, uh, but. Um, these things, these with hands would come up in the side like that. So it, it fits uh, nicely. So, um, but that's not where I need these uh, beams. These beams have to come out more like that and then come out to the middle of the landing pad. And so I'm gonna be working on that geometry now. And I actually still probably still have the 
inside up inside here there's another one by one technic brick which will allow me to put more of these in there and so they would be coming down uh let me get a maybe an eight l axle they'll be coming down like this right probably more now uh, that won't be an eight I feel like it's be a 12. there we go so and then and then i would put uh probably a black one let's see this is this is uh, this is me again just thinking what i'm going to be doing here and that would be there like that let's see you can see that that'll be coming down so hold this thing rigid and then from here there would be like this guy maybe the one that's less deep that would go oh, it's, yeah it's not good enough i need a different one i need uh the very very shallow one there it is i keep all these in separate bins uh, one and four go in one bin two and five go into the other bin and three and six go in the other bin so it would be like this guy and then this guy would have let's see that goes back in here somewhere and then this would go not that far out but i think you get it and then this over here be attaching to the center of the landing pad <laughs> and then and then uh, i might have a few of these coming down i don't know yet um you know so just it's it's a hypothesis it's a, it's a test of what i want to do um because i have to do something uh because the droop bothers me and it doesn't bother too many other people, but I do know when I'm talking to people about it that uh, I, and we're looking at the actual layout that I know every time I point out something, oh, look at the, the 928 on top of the landing pad. The landing pads, it, if you put a marble on it, it would roll out to the outside. And that's what I don't want. I want it to be, when you're looking at it, the landing pads are perfectly flat across the center of this, this piece here. So uh, that's what I'm going to be working on. And then it took 27 minutes to tell you about it. <laughs> so uh, if I get to a point where I'm taking this whole thing apart and um, and some people are interested in how the interior is built, honestly, it's just bricks on top of bricks. But overall, you know, I, I can try to find a CAD file. I tried once like a, a couple of years back and I didn't find it. But again, I didn't look through my heart. I didn't look through all my hard drives. Um I do know my very, very old laptop that I've been using for my RCX that it does have POV Ray installed. It does have the MLCAD installed. So I thought it would be on that one, but I thought I searched the entire hard drive and I couldn't find it. Uh, so it must have happened after that. So um, anyway, I'll see if I find it. But in the interim, honestly, it's just a bunch of bricks. <laughs> it really is. It's just a bunch of bricks. If you want something specific of how I built it, uh like the dimensions at the top um from here to here is 12 12 wide from here to here and then from here to here is 12 wide and from here to here is 12 wide obviously and from here to here is 12 wide so from here to here is 16 wide right so uh because this is a t this is a two this is a two is it, is it, yeah no no it's 18 because it's uh 12 plus 3 plus 3 um it's 18 wide and it's just two by three bricks and then slopes all the way down. Um, and as I say, this is tiles on top for the next level to go on top. Um, and as I say, the, 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 I used grill plates here. I didn't have to use our grill tiles here. I didn't have to, but cause you don't see the grill itself, <laughs> but the next piece on top, but it does. And they're gray because of course the floor is right there of the next level. It's a floor. So Every grace, as I say, signifies a level, and that's where the floor is. Um, and I, of course, I used a ton of windows I because I didn't want to fill it all in with bricks. I didn't want to do that. My, my first iteration, these things were all full of bricks. And I'm going, oh, that's a lot of bricks. And it's just a big wall of blue. So um, I used a lot of windows all the way down. And that saved pieces. It really did. It saved weight. It really did. Uh, these things obviously clearly saved weight. Uh, they really did. Um, and uh, the the reinforcement structure is honestly the two, the the four by four trans dark blue because they're bricked in here and they're bricked at the bottom and I can stand on this 
I did. <laughs> I can stand on the top here because the weight from here goes right into the trans blue, goes all the way through the floor, trans blue, and right back to the blue bricks all the way at the bottom. That's, that's this way it's built. And so you got one, two, three, four in every corner. This corner piece, that corner, that corner, that corner goes all the way down to the bottom. That's what I wanted because the slopes weren't going to do it. The slopes were not going to be able to carry the weight above them because they're just going to fall apart because it's, it's as thin. And I don't know if you saw this. It's as thin as a uh, two by two inverted with a two by two slope in the front and uh, like for one, two, three, four levels. That's it. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no strength there to hold any weight whatsoever. There's no strength there. And then it comes down straight here, which is fine because of course it has to be inside this line here. That's why that's there, right? Because when you put this on, you know, you don't want space there leaking out of the space station and again in the universe there's no big gaps now, we always joke about the 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 little tiny gaps here the uh the section of death here i ignore them in universe they they don't exist in universe <laughs> but uh so there's four there's four four layers of uh blue uh slopes and blue inverted slopes here and then it goes to a technic level and this technic level is a square all the way around uh, here that holds goes right across the top of the 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 four by the two by four by six and two by four by five uh, trans dark blue uh, here 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 and here and, and and reinforces the entire so this this thing is now reinforced by Technic bricks so it doesn't come apart right and then it's just basic bricks on top of that brick 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 to the top and again since there's no reinforcement across this way that's what the Technic beams are here for that reinforces it. Uh, you can't see them back inside, but you can. They're they're back in there. The, so they hold the next layer inside. There's because any as I say, every every floor except this one is ten bricks high, and so there's this is a floor right there, and this would be a floor here, but you know it's open area. It's a it's a um, it's whatever that deck was called in the DS nine the the observation deck, or the, the the promenade. That's it. The promenade so it's open but this would be a this would be a floor layer this layer here is only five bricks tall because that's where the doors are so it's 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 10 10 5 10 10 so this is actually five decks in in the um in the hierarchy of the tower i think this is floor uh, uh floor five here at the bottom because the 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 base is four four decks tall and then there's the um, loading the, um, the the trains the monorail station, which is the uh, floor five. So this is six, I guess. Yeah, sorry, this is six, and then seven, eight. This would be nine, but since it's the promenade, I don't count it. This is nine, and ten is here. Ten is the observation deck, and then uh, eleven is the air ops, and then twelve is the cake topper. <laughs> twelve decks. Um, I had it all planned. <laughs> I like in my head, in universe. This is this actually, you know, it, it is, it is, it it, it it tries to be as consistent in universe as possible. Um, because like if if I ever get around to creating a story for this thing, just like they have Lego Wars, uh, I want it to be understood. And um, so I do have plans uh, for story time because, as you can see, I like story time. And, and so when you, when you get into the lift, you have to say deck 12 and it goes to deck 12, right? That's in universe. It has to, cause there's no stairs. There's no ladders getting between the levels. Uh, us Lego guys used to call it the hand of God that would move the guys minifigs from, you know, one floor to the next floor. Uh, but I wanted in universe to have, and I think I mentioned this before when it came to the moon base, uh, corridors that I built. Uh, all my moon base corridors up until very, very recently in universe and even outside universe were accessible by minifigs. Not that minifigs are going to go walking through them, obviously, but, uh, they were hollow. So the minifigs in universe could walk through them and I'm going, but they're not, they're not going to be walking through them. So why am I putting so much effort to make sure the minifigs can get around the layout when they're not getting around the layout? <laughs> So, so anything that's hidden now that anything that the public cannot see is behind the solid brick. 
I fill in as much as possible to, for reinforcement up until recently. Like you look at this. So you got the door here. This is empty. It's a corridor to get onto the floor, onto the promenade because in universe, you can't block it off. <laughs> I put so much effort into that. I'm going, why am I putting effort into that? Because again, it makes it more structurally, uh, to make things hollow and um, accessible by minifigs. You are losing structure. And I did for the longest time. So I had to compensate that with Technic beams uh, here, here, uh, down here. Uh, and I've stopped doing that now. <laughs> so so uh, going forward, because it is a lot of effort uh, to make things in universe work uh, for, for something that never has to work. Um, so I don't mind losing that, but I do mind is that mess of wire. So I am going to fix that at some point. Uh, you can't see it this way because it's kind of hidden behind this little layer of blue here. Um, so when you're looking at it from, um, from when it's in the layout, you don't see it cause you're 10 feet away from this thing. You don't see inside. Uh, you don't see the little bunch of wires that are hanging right there i can see them from here but you're not going to see them when you're standing out in the public area behind the fence behind the railing behind the whatever um the other thing i may do and look how dusty this is <laughs> this has not been a part it's like it's so dusty um the other thing what i may do and i don't i'm on the fence so i have a friend who does cut uh third party cuts windows for for lego frames window frames and I showed you that in the big ship that I just built. Those are all brand new windows that are not official Lego windows, but they are exactly the same size as these guys, right? Um, and they have even have little nubs on them that go into the holes so you can do this. The issue is, is that it's slightly darker trans yellow than this. And if I replace these windows here, and even these ones, he has ones for these two those windows too. He doesn't have these because that would require bending and molding. So I don't, there's no way I can get those new so i have to accept that these things are slightly scratched and that's what happens from 35 whatever old windows so if i replace these with brand new mint windows from my buddy how bad is it going to look with these guys beside it i don't know so i haven't oh, like see here's the example right here this is a new window here and you can see out of the six that one looks new and the rest of them do not <laughs> so uh so that's the only new one up here i think in this entire uh floor there's none in the bottom two um yeah so it is what it is uh i i have to get rid of the dust at some point <laughs> but um <coughs> i'm i'm happy with this build uh, but as I say, when you're looking at it by itself, I don't think it looks that great because it, it's got these things sticking out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if this was a standalone mock, obviously I would have made it slightly differently. Uh, but it's not a standalone mock. It's kind of the, the whole center, the whole, almost like the NXT satellite. <laughs> uh, not that I'm pro Canada and what we've done. Um, When you look at the layout and you realize that it is a bunch of modules, we'll just call them modules, um, like this and and like this. Like this to me looks good on its own. I think this looks fantastic on its own. I think you, you put stilts on it and put on the put on the layout, right? As a as a landing pad. Done, right? It doesn't have to be part of this thing. It doesn't have to be part of this at all. You fill in this little piece in the back here and you have a landing pad that you can use anywhere. This by itself is a standalone mock that looks great <laughs> by itself. This thing to me doesn't look great by itself because it looks like it's obviously missing stuff and it obviously is missing stuff. Um, so um, that's what I, that's what I notice when I start working on all these parts of my layout, even the, even the, the, the four uh, pieces at the bottom, the whole base of the building um they look okay on their own and you can see inside and what the people are doing the, the minifigs are doing but as i say the entire tower did not come together for me until it came together like it took a bunch of years before it, i i sat back i remember building it here in the basement before we put the wall up and uh, so i built it for brick fat 2011 uh, as i say from from chicago 2010 to brick fat 2011 huge changes to the layout 
at least this building. Uh, 10 extra stories were added because <laughs> uh, it was only two stories tall in brick uh, in brick world. Um, and oh, sorry, it was not even because the cake topper wasn't, I hadn't made the cake topper yet. But um, soon after BrickFat 2011, the cake topper showed up. But um, but even that wasn't done because they had the, 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 the crappy landing pads and the landing pads came like a year later or maybe two, I can't remember. Um, and so I always say this, I was never happy with the tower until I was happy with the tower. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't, I, I said I wasn't done. I go to a show for a show because I'm going to, you know, I like the shows. And the shows are basically the only time I get to see the whole thing set up uh, with the with the monorails and everything else. So, uh, and I don't mind doing shows with half completed stuff. There's There's some Lego builders out there that will not show uh, their mock until they're fully satisfied with it and then they'll bring it to a show and then you never see it again like okay I get that because people want to bring something new every show and that's fantastic and that's the way some people do things um, I don't know how many times I've shown this classic space layout I've talked about this before I don't think I'm uh, bugging anybody by keeping on showing up at shows with the classic space layout most people say yeah glad to see it again because uh, I have noticed that um Every time they look at it, they find something new to look at. Oh, Dave, is that new? No, it's been there since the beginning. Oh, I didn't notice it before. Uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, so for me, right now, it is me bringing classic space layout to the to, to shows. Uh, and so I don't mind doing that. And I, I, I mentioned numerous times, I love setting it up. The only time I get to see it together is at a show, unless the show's in my driveway, in which case I get to see it there. Um, but um, but I, am, I always putter with it on the off hours when <laughs> we're not doing a show. Uh, I will modify, if, if, if not the tower, something else. Uh, landing pads, the the, the, the stanchions that hold up the monorail track, um, building something new, uh, adding a little bit of a greeble here, adding a little bit of a doodad there. So every single show has shown something different. Some of it's tiny, some of it's massively huge. Uh, differences between that and the show before. Uh, so I try to not keep it consistent between shows um, and even laying it out at a show. Uh, but what I do want to do, as I say, is I want to see if I can come up with something to hold the landing pads uh, better and we'll see what happens. Um, I've, I'll tangent out <laughs> 42 minutes. Um, as I say, if I take the, the, my problem with taking this apart is I have to worry about the wiring. If the wiring wasn't here, I'd take this thing apart right here on the screen right now. And I show you this whole thing in, inside the interior and stuff. Um, but there's a lot of wiring in here. Like, and this is the critical juncture of all the wiring for the tower because it has to go to the four landing pads. And not only the, the, the actual um, uh, life lights lights the, and, the, and the landing pad itself, but the EL connectors uh for the uh for the, the ring itself uh so there's eight of those four and four uh, again i used two, two by four electric plate and i soldered uh wires to it so when i put the landing pad on that has the exact same two by four electric plate with wire solder to it i don't have to connect it up the yell wires have to connect up but that's a nice connector that's pretty easy uh but this just makes my life so much easier to connect the wires to the landing pads um and then up here we have two connectors like that um and and one goes to um well they both go to um oh sorry one goes to the uh observation deck and then one goes all the way through to the um the um the air ops above that um just because it works better that way so, anywho, um, there's this guy. So three wires, and that they would come through here, um, and then they go up to the next level. So three connectors. It's a lot of wiring. I will say that it was. It was. And, I, and again, I'm not whining. I loved it. I I I I adored the wiring job, uh, and I tried to not use my Dremel as much as possible. <laughs> so, so uh i would say in this in this whole tower here straight up 
the only modified pieces in this entire this entire diamond section are these guys because of course I had to solder the wires to them. Uh, there's no other drilled holes in here. All the lights are I'm using the one by one headlight bricks uh, and the two by two radar dish for lighting down. Uh, and so there's no drilling of whatever. Uh, and so there is this is the only modified part in this entire thing as a two by two electric plates, uh, which again, I tried to keep it down to a middle and you cannot see inside the wiring, <laughs> right? Cause I hit it. I brick built it in so, it, but you wouldn't see it. Um, I basically hit it inside the, the four by four blue trans dark blue if you look at this you can see the wire coming up through but i didn't have to drill holes i just pushed it through built it around it um so i i'm glad um as i say i try to keep the um uh the the modifications as minimum as possible even where it comes out it's just a, a brick gap and a brick gap down here uh the the whole this whole deck the promenade deck is the demark uh, of the demarcation of the landing pads. So it should be heavily populated because this is where people come and go and get on the ships and fly away and come back and land and whatever. And there's only like three people on this deck because after I did the wiring, I forgot to put them on there because it was packed before. Uh, and I just, when I finished the wiring, I put the whole thing back together for a show and sporadically I will be at a show and I will take off one of these panels and I'll drop a guy inside. I should actually spend some time because, uh, you know, there's, there's Wild Sal right there. Hello, Wild Sal. <laughs> she's in the, she's in the, the, uh, the blues, uh, classic space outfit that she had, um, in that one, one set. So that's why she's in here. <laughs> um, there's actually a few Wild Styles in the layout, just like there's a few Bennies in the layout. Um, because people like seeing them. Oh, there's Wild Style, and they'll actually see this one. I'm going, hey, that's pretty good. I, I, and I keep on, sorry, let's go up for this quick little thing. Even from the beginning, Jeff and I, uh, we talked about having a, uh, a, 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 an Easter egg hunt or whatever, a, um, whatever you call it, like a piece of paper saying, oh, how many galaxy explorers are there? How many robots do you see? Blah, blah, blah. And how many Wild Styles and whatever. Um, and, uh, I, I actually have a, a Word document print uh, on my hard drive somewhere uh, that's with the the floor plan, uh, the the TD track designer. Um, I just haven't finished making it. It's been there for 11 years now. I just haven't finished making it. Um, and I know that when um, that guy used to have the Lego show in the Niagara Falls. He had that room rented up uh, off of Clifton Hill there. And we went a few times with Josh when he was young. It's gone now. But uh, he used to have the little marquees, the little display stands. Say, hey, uh, do you see the guy riding his bicycle across the falls or whatever? And there was like five or six uh, per station things, uh, Easter eggs you could find. Um, I love that. I think that's fantastic. Uh, so that is one thing I do want to complete. It's been 11 years, but I do want to complete that. And have some stuff that people can oh scoop it out and try to find. Uh, the other one is to have more movement, uh, not just automatic movement, but press a button movement in the uh, in the layout and have like four or five stations on the outside so the public can press a button and something happens. The only thing I have right now, unfortunately, the only thing I have that really works, if I actually get it working, as the as the repair bay door opens and the ship comes out and the ship goes back in, I that that I have that completely worked out via RCX and uh, TD. I mean TD, LDC, um, well NQC, <laughs> NQC uh, it worked perfectly. You press the button and the door opens and and then you can mash the button. I had the whole thing worked out so people can just keep on mashing the button and and, and try to get it to stop. But the other one is to start and stop the trains, uh, press the button, make the trains go. I think that's kind of lame myself. So I have to find more things that I, that, that I can build into the layout where something moves when you press the button. Um, and I just haven't gotten there yet because I'm so busy with this kind of stuff. <laughs> so there are future plans. There are always, always plans that I have unfinished. I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, Schubert's ninth symphony. Um, <laughs> completely unfinished so many ideas in my head that i want to get completed uh and i just take my time because the showing still works 
as it is. And uh, I'm happy with it. I'm happy doing shows with it. I'm happy um, modifying it as I can and, and thinking about ruminating. But I think now that the rumination's done for this guy and I have a plan, I'm just going to see how it works. So uh, that's it. That's all. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. I was going to make a nice short video. That didn't happen. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Um, if you have, uh, this is very important, very, 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 very important. Thanks, Rob. Um, I, I, I will say that, uh, as the wrap up that uh, Rob Hendricks life lights were just a godsend for, for me, um, uh, because it just, just go look at my old videos that, that I made in, in the spring and the summer and, and what the lights out of this thing, my buddy Pete, I just. It blows my mind every time I look at them. I can't believe that's what it looks like. Uh, I'm so happy with it. Um, the lighting. Uh, and again, that's not even complete yet. Although it's mostly complete. There are some room for improvement. But um, I'm very happy with life lights. And again, I got a whole bin of life lights here. Uh, that uh, I'm going to be experimenting and doing more stuff with. But that's after I fix the pads. Because the pads is something I've been noticing for months. Or months. For years now. So I'm going to go work on that. I want everybody out there to stay safe, take, take care, be kind to one another, uh, be kind to yourself, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, know that I really, really enjoyed the feedback lately from, uh, from all everybody out there. Uh, and even again, I keep on saying this and I cannot say this enough. If, even if you don't leave me feedback, if you never get in contact with me, just like watching my videos, that's perfectly acceptable. And I still appreciate you. I see you. And appreciate you uh, and know that you never have any kind of uh, pressure here to do anything or appreciate anything or whatever this is this is a this is what I call the the Romulan neutral zone for just hanging out just hang out do what you want um, and know that I appreciate you so that's it that's all uh, long and prosper and all that stuff stay safe <laughs>